Hi, I'm Tony Fowl. This is uh, the fifth episode in a series of videos following along my modifications to this normal manual lathe in order to turn it into a grinder that I can use to grind motorcycle cams like this Air Mackie one here. What the plan is, on the back of the cross slide here, I'll bolt a grinding head. The lathe has already been converted to electronic control, so under computer control I can move the cross slide in and out. So with the cam mounted in the spindle of the lathe and rotating slowly, if this moves backwards and forwards under the control of the computer that's got the details of the cam in it then uh, with any luck I'll end up with uh, a, a decent cam at the end. first four videos were mainly concerned with detailing the construction and alignment aspect of this so this video is about actually doing some quantitative tests firstly with the original cross slide and drive on there and secondly with the modified cross side. In order to do the comparison, before I dismantled the lay, took the original cross slide off, I did three tests on that. Uh, uh, one was to measure the actual drag to pull the cross slide along on its own. Two was to measure the resolution of it. And three was to measure any backlash. So first of all I did that with the original, then after I did the conversion when it's in this current state, I repeated those tests. This video will go through those tests and summarise at the end. Let's see what happens. In order to know whether I've made an improvement or not, I need to take some measurements before and after. So now we're looking at the before and with this setup that I've got here I can measure the accuracy and later the backlash. I've got a linear encoder on here which has got a resolution of one micron 0 0.001 of a millimeter. Here I've got a little electronics box which I made which displays on here in millimeters or inches the reading of the encoder. I can control the movement of the cross slide with this control here. It has a hundred clicks in one revolution and normally for turning I have the uh, software for controlling the movement of the slide set so each click moves this 0 0.01 of a millimeter or 10 microns. I've made a temporary change to the software to make it so that each click on here is one micron commanded movement. Now the commanded movement and actual movement that occurs is not necessarily the same and that's what I'm going to measure now. So each click on here if everything's working perfectly, will show on the uh, uh, last digit here on the top line, it will show an increase of one. Let's move one click at a time and see how this changes. That's one click, one movement on there, one digit showing, two, three. Hey, this is better than I thought. I had, uh, when I made it, I did this check for using uh, 10 micron steps, not one. I don't think I had that encoder when I made it. But this is uh, looking very good. Every click is notching up one micron. Now what I have found was that due to friction on here, sometimes one click wouldn't move anything. And then when I would go for the next click, so there had been two outstanding clicks, it would move it would show a movement of the two microns. So what was happening would be the friction was holding it up a, a little bit. And when I added the next click, the accumulated force from the motor would cause it to move. Okay, so the next uh, measurement I want to make is to get some idea of the backlash. 
Now this has all been moving in one direction so um, backlash wasn't relevant. This is set on a 111 so I'm going to wind the control backwards until this starts to move and the delay in doing that is the backlash. Nothing, nothing, nothing. There, it just started to move there. I'd moved the dial about 28 clicks. So, so on that basis, it's got about 0 0.028 millimeters of backlash. I'll uh, have another go at that coming backwards. It should move pretty much straight away. The backlash should have been taken up. No, it doesn't. I, I had to move uh, about five clicks in order to get that to move again. So the backlash hasn't fully been taken out at that stage. Let's try it again. So now I'm going to reverse the direction and go back and we can see this is showing 99 at the present and this is showing 30. Moving that in. There. So I had to move 20 clicks on here before this started to move. Okay, now I'll repeat all these measurements when I've got the linear slides on so we can compare it. Very pleased with the um, accuracy of this. Now just about anybody with a manual lathe would be over the moon with that small amount of uh, backlash on the cross slide, but that's not acceptable for what I want to use this for, for the cam grinding. That has to be much better, so I need to look at where the source of that backlash is. I trace the source of most of the backlash to the belt drive which I had on the original system. The belt was uh, reasonably tight but not super tight to avoid overloading the bearings but when I levered the motor away on its adjustment to a very very tight fitting belt the backlash dropped to about half of the original figure so it was quite obvious where a lot of the backlash was coming from. Well there was no way I was going to run the lathe with the belt that tight because of the loading on the bearings and the ball screw. So what I decided to do was to fit the motor at the rear of the cross slide but with direct drive. Now originally it had uh, a, a 2 to 1 reduction ratio through the, the belt. With the direct drive it's 1 to 1. The test will show the difference that it made with the direct drive to the amount of overall backlash. Well I've now got things set up on here to test both the resolution and the backlash. Let's give it a go. So e each click should move one micron if it obeys the instructions. I'll just zero it. We're on zero. One digit moved. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just like the original slide, the resolution of this corresponds to the commanded amount. But now that we've got it in this position I want to check the backlash by coming backwards. Well I was actually winding the handle backwards then. But, so I'll be winding the handle forwards and we'll see how many clicks it takes before this starts to move. That was about 30 clicks with the original cross slide on there. I'll set it to zero again first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It took seven clicks or seven microns before it started to go in the opposite direction. Now that compares to about 30 with the original cross slide. So there's considerably less backlash uh, with the linear rails. Mainly due to the change from belt drive to direct drive at the rear. The test I want to do is to check 
the value of the friction of the, the slide on here again before and after. I'll just exercise this a few times just to make sure there's a bit of an oil film underneath. I freshly oiled the, the slides and adjusted the gear. Here I've got this digital balance which I'll use to try and measure the force. I'll switch it on. I don't know if you can read this on the video, I've tried to, to get it there. It's calibrated in kilograms, so I'm taking 3.94 to even get it to move. And then it's very jerky. 4, 5. Seven. So it's between about 4 and 6 kilograms force uh, to make the slide move. It'll be interesting to see what it's like with the linear ball slides. So I've, I've now got the new cross slide set up on the linear ball rails. So let's see if we can measure the drag on this one and compare it to the drag that we had originally. I'll just set that to zero. We'll give it a little pull. So what is it, about 110? A lot less than it was with the original slide. Well, to summarise, firstly I did the tests, the friction tests, with how much force was required to move the cross slide on its own. And while it was difficult to get a steady reading on the digital scale when I was pulling it, because of the uh, flexure in the scale itself, it would tend to moving jerks. It was clear enough that with the new slide and the linear ball rails the amount of drag or friction was about 10% of what it was to start with so that was uh, a pretty good result. Uh, then when it came to measuring the resolution I was quite surprised at just how good the original setup was. I thought there would be a lot more jerking but in, in fact when my, one micron was commanded for it to move it moved one micron. I was expecting it to bunch up so that it might take two or three clicks on the control in order to get it to move at all. I wasn't really expecting any better from the resolution point of view with the new cross slide and that was more or less what, uh, what I got. But when it came to the backlash there was considerably less backlash when I had the motor mounted at the back compared to the belt driven motor that was at the front. So that's made quite a, a, a difference. It's a very small amount of backlash in terms of what you'd normally expect in a lathe but it's more than I would like to see for trying to produce a quality cam. But I think there's a simple way out of that. If I spring load cross slide so that it's always putting load in a single direction on the ball screw then I think that should eliminate the remaining backlash and with the new slide that backlash is fairly low. Okay so uh, that's about it. I'll be making sparks uh, grinding some test cams fairly soon and the video of that will probably be two or three videos down the line. There's a couple of other things I want to uh, uh, covering a video to make it complete. So see you next time and thanks for watching. If you uh, like this video or any of the others please share, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the uh, button to receive updates of any other videos. Thanks for watching.